right, so this is Failure Incorporated, uh, the podcast where we talk about a lot of gaming stuff because we love games and all that other bullshit. Um, <laughs> today's topic is Super Vibe, so we have people who have either played the game, worked on the game, or are big into the games like beta and early stages. So welcome, everybody. I'm going to just quick intros all around. I'm Failco Punch, the host of this podcast. I used to stream Gigantic a lot. Er, you should know who I am by now on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> Bidbood, you're next. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bidbood, or David, David Bosek. Um, I work on Supervive. I've been here for a couple years now. Coming up on two years in a couple months. Yeah, holy crap. And before that, I worked on Apex Legends, and before that, I worked on Destiny. And so I've been doing games for probably around eight-ish years right now, but I don't know. This game's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited to be working on it, and I'm really excited to be playing it with everyone. Ooh. Sin, tell everyone who you are. <laughs> uh, hello, hello. I'm Truix Sin, also uh, old content creator for Gigantic. Um, may it rest in peace, I guess, uh, here soon again. Aww. However, comma. Now I, I just do a lot of light content creation on the side, but mostly editing whenever I'm not being buried under work hours. Nice, nice. North, how about you? Uh, hi, I'm North. I am a current content creator for Gigantic. I also stream and I also compete in some of the community tournaments we uh, run, and I'm happy to be here. Yay! And last but not least, Noxy, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Noxie. I uh, have been playtesting Supervive since 2022, and I would consider myself one of the bigger content creators for the game. Uh, I feel like I'm a little small fry and <laughs> a small fish, big pond type of thing, but I love Supervive. That's, uh, that's, that's my favorite game right now, smiling. <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. It's it's really amazing to hear, like, been playing it already for, for two years. Wow, you... You must be the one to watch right now. You and uh, Bidboot over here, honestly. I mean, I've gotten hit by the train four times, I think, at this point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there's actual pros among us right now. Um, so I actually want to start off with the like the general thoughts of everybody has about Supervive. Um, the fact that it's like kind of a mashup of a bunch of genres. And I actually, I want to start with you, Bidboot, like, Tell us kind of like the inspiration for making a game that is all of these things. Like, what is it? it t tell us the mashup that you guys, you know, say it is first. Let let's hear. Oh, yeah. I, honestly, this the one that we've been parroting was coined by players in the Discord a long time ago, <laughs> before I even joined, which was uh, League of Legends cross Apex Legends cross Super Smash Bros. And I, I do think that's a pretty good, like, you know, it's it's a good couple name drops that mix up pretty well i since i've been here it's been more like actiony focus but talking a lot with like where they started and where they've been going they really i think um theorcraft was really interested in like pushing the the top down sort of moba genre into some of the more actiony you know br that kind of stuff that had been coming out like mobas have been out for a while it's it's Generally, we kind of say, like, don't don't try and out Call of Duty, Call of Duty. Like, don't try and out League of Legends, League of Legends at this point. People who are, yeah. want to play that game are playing that game. Um, and something that I think uh, has really worked for me as a developer and player for Supervive, because uh, I'm a big, like, shooter action game player and also a big League of Legends MOBA player, is the, like, pushing of the top-down MOBA stuff into the more fast-paced, action-y kind of gameplay. You know, we have the... WASD and mouse movement, which makes you feel a little more kind of, you know, connected to the character, and that helps a lot with, like, the action feeling, and just the game is fast and lethal and quick, and it didn't used to always be that like that. Oh, wow. Um, Noxy's video has played since, you know, you've probably been playing since before I even joined the company Whoa! and was playing, but oh my gosh. used to be a lot slower and more kind of typically mobile and, and they talk about in in a uh, work they talk about like combat 3.0 is like a big update they did where it's like let's just crank all these numbers up let's go faster let's go more action let's lean into the sort of the we say it has like a shooter soul to it oh, you know what yeah, i mean it's yeah. a top-down moba but it also is about aiming and speed and lethality and stuff much closer to what you'd find in typical kind of shooter brs than you would in most mobas and i think that that mashup feels really like unique and, and unexplored right now or underexplored right now and i think it's i don't know i think to me that's like the really really exciting piece of it oh wow oh my gosh that's really cool like 
while playing it, that is kind of how I felt. Like, it's just so fast. Uh, and, like, it focuses on combat a lot more than I expected from, like, a Battle Royale where it's kind of like, look for loot, do nothing for a while, uh, <laughs> and then eventually die oh. once you find your first team in the whole game and that's it. And then you have to start over. Um, no. So, yeah, I love the fast pace. Actually, Noxie, I'm curious, like, like comparing how it was and how it is, like, what are your thoughts on, like, the first phases of the game? Um, early Super Vive, uh, it was really chunky and clunky and <laughs> slow. Um, there used to be, I used to think it was so charming, but it was not good for the game at the time. Uh, there used to be like a quest system that you could oh. accomplish like in game where you would talk to an NPC in game and then you would do a quest. And so it really did promote that, um, you know, loot your items, don't, don't see any other teams type of thing. Mm -hmm. So they got rid of it. Uh, but I really liked it. I thought it was cute. It did feel more MOBA focused, uh, in the early development days than it does now um i think when the universal punch power came out that's when it really felt like it shifted to be more focused on fighting so very fairly recently i would say the the universal punch was actually this year the beginning of this year and and the last, end of year, last year yeah, year, yeah like it was that, it yeah. was pretty recent that i feel like the shift changed and that's when it felt like the team really figured out what they wanted to make. Like they like settled on oh, wow. the game that they wanted to make. And now, now it feels like we're going in a direction that like we're, we're, we're gunning for like a, a solid game here. Um, <laughs> I like it. I like it. I'm a big fan of the fighting. Uh, I think the revive system is what makes that, that difference as well. Uh, Cause you know, reviving in say like apex legends is feels completely different than reviving in super Vive, where one person can get away and your entire team's back. Uh, even if you had like a really nasty fight that did not go in your favor whatsoever. Oh my God. So you always yes. have a chance to come back. And I think that's the, that's the, one of the main reasons that super Vive feels different and still like rewarding to anybody who plays it. I, that's such a good I call can out. double up on that as well for myself. Who, like I'm normally not a BR enjoyer. I'm not a battle Royale yeah. enjoyer. Something about with not only how Super Vibe handles, I know I get confused sometimes when I first sit down to oh play because I'll still try to click since I do play League of Legends on the side. I'll try to click to move. Brain has to readjust <laughs> for the Waz, but more specifically, that revive mechanic is probably the the cleanest way to ease players who are not into the genre into being able to play because it's probably that cycle of being able to go back into the menu or of having to go back into the menu, re queue up before you can then sit back sit back down to get into the match and play and then die within the first couple minutes. And this at least you have a little bit more stake and investment in terms of time, unless the entire team gets oh, yeah. um versus having to play menu simulator. Oh my god. I'm actually gonna like call it North Star here because we dropped in one area. We died immediately, like our Except for him, North Star is MVP playing uh, the, <laughs> oh my God, what's the, the rabbits? Elena. Elena. Yeah, playing that character, got away, revived the team, the whole team. We died again immediately. He gets away again, revives us again. We're, we played almost <laughs> nothing at all this whole time. He <laughs> we, <laughs> revives us a third time. We die, gets the crown, somehow we revive <laughs> again and we win the game. Oh snap! Easy. Oh my God. <laughs> like <laughs> we 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 were carried basically <laughs> to the end, and it's the only game I've ever felt like. Wow, there's so much excitement. Even if we're dead, if one person lives, there's a chance. There's a fucking chance. <laughs> and I've never felt like that in a BR ever. Usually, it's like everyone's dead. You're. I have played, you know, Spellbreak where you are a wisp. And people can revive you, can like execute you, but that's it. That's they have to stand on you to revive you. There's no other interesting way to come back and like actually have a, you know, an epic comeback. I didn't expect that at all from Supervive, and uh, it does have a lot of that kind of like crazy high anxiety moments, um, like all throughout it. So I gotta say, like first of all, North Star is an MVP for being able to carry us <laughs> uh, <laughs> to victory, but. What a cool, what a cool thing to add. Um, I'm really curious, actually, like, was the revive mechanic? And I mean, you, you guys have basically like four ways to revive people. Yeah. Um, like, when did that come about? When do you decide that needed to, like, you needed to have so many? 
I honest, so I when I joined it was already oh my god, there's so many ways to revive <laughs> in this game. I I think something that as we shifted more towards the sort of high lethality combat and stuff, and this is me kind of like working backwards from my design brain, and this is not necessarily like the decisions as they went, but like I feel that uh when we sort of embraced this idea that engaging in a fight and dying is not a failure letting a single person or even three people on your team die is not like a failure of an entire engage helps so much to just drive the action forward and be like i think a lot of brs sometimes struggle with the issue of um eliminating an enemy team at cost to yourself is often like a a disadvantageous play for the long run there are 20 teams in the match and you lose three of your four people and now there are 19 other teams in the match you haven't actually improved your chances of winning the entire match by that much just because doing damage to enemies at cost to yourself you know the, the cost to yourself is more impactful than wiping out another team mm -hmm. um and so this idea of like okay Jumping in on a team, wiping a whole team, and having one of your allies survive is actually, like, really meaningful and impactful. It makes, just really helps with this idea of, like, go in, be aggressive, play hard, you know, take fights. Because we just kind of learned that, like, the PvP, the fighting, is what's really fun and exciting in this more action-y yeah. version of the game. So, like, allowing that to be not the wrong decision is, is really cool. And it also, it just helps us get away with the really high, the really low TTK, the high lethality, where a lot of MOBAs have this thing of, like, you don't want, like, oh, I made one mistake, I got hit by one skill, sh you know, I got hit by Void Snap, and I got 100 to 0. And, and that can feel really terrible in a lot of, you know, MOBAs and stuff, like, oh, yeah. oh well, we can't let that person, like, 100 to 0 just because they caught you, but if we can be, like, well, that's just one person on your team dying, and now they have their cooldowns down, like, you know, you can fight back from that situation, etc., like, I don't know, I think that the comebacks are really exciting and allowing the game to be more lethal, allowing the game to be more, like, high-octane and faster-paced and crazy, like, the revives just lean into that sort of goal and vibe better. It, it does cause some design challenges, though, to mm -hmm. be fair. Like, something that is that is a struggle that we've always had is, like, how do you make it feel like um, I'm getting stronger over a match? How do I make each match feel different? How do the things I find change my experience game to game because we have this issue of like well we can't let the powers you find and the amount of power you can accrue over a game get too much because what we really don't like is the situation where you have that thing where oh my god one person has gotten away and we revived our team three times and now us with all white items and white armor are facing you know the super kitted team that's been steamrolling the lobby like if it feels like that's unwinnable if it feels like, oh, they just have more stuff than us, so there's no chance, then, like, th all those revives start feeling like, I would rather just leave and get into the next game. Like, we're never going to win anyway. We're too far behind. So the amount of power delta that we can build up through progression over a match is, like, pretty limited. You know what I mean? And, and that's something that's causes those struggles. You know, I, I think, like, there are... There are stuff that suffers for that a little bit it's it's better overall but like equipment is a lot less meaningful upgrading your stuff can feel a lot like i feel like i'm getting powerful not in the sort of same big progression beats as you would in like a league of legends game you know what i mean mm -hmm. if you get really ahead in a league of legends game and you have more items than your opponents you can be the baddest motherfucker in the <laughs> game and everyone knows it and you can 1v5 you know what yeah. i mean and and we don't really have that but so, so, you know, it's it's a trade-off. We lose that sort of individual progression and power fantasy, but we gain this idea of, like, you can always outskill. You can always come back from disadvantages in statistical power or in, you know, progression by planning strategically or engaging really well or playing as a team or mechanically dodging and outplaying someone. And I think that that's... I, I'm glad we took that direction, you know what I mean? I think that's part of the, like, pushing towards the the sort of shooter soul, the action game soul, away from the sort of MOBA soul. is like, the the progression is, is less impactful, mm -hmm. and the, like, moment-to-moment -moment skill checks and gameplay become more and more impactful, which, I don't know, feels feels unique in this space right now, at least. I think it's something that helps make Supervive feel different and be more appealing to people who don't really play League of Legends, but would be interested in this because, oh, I like Apex, you know what I mean? I like... 
shooter games. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Sorry, I'm blathering on. It's great. I love it. No, completely fine. Passion. Honestly, it's one of those things like as well. There's so many niche things that Supervive does to help it not only stand out against other competitors, but more specifically, better form the identity of its own, which kind of also leads into one of these next talking points that we like to move towards, which is like, what is something any of you like most about Supervive? For me, like that scaling is really nice. There's also like a good level of jank that you can come out <laughs> with just because it's that situation where mm -hmm. you can just outskill, outsmart, you can out something other players, uh, and sometimes your teammates, uh, but that's beside <laughs> Teleporting the Teleporting your teammates yeah. off the um, map, yeah. huh? Like for me, yes. For me, the, it's literally the jank. <laughs> There are a couple of the characters that have always stood out to me, but I will say that Void is one of those that I didn't think that I would fall in love with that character as much as uh, as much as I did. Being able to pull camps off the map to clear them and the, <laughs> the loot does come back up. Of course, you can't do that to every one of them. But more specifically, a lot of the weird setups you can do, like there is so much in-depth mechanic aside from just what you initially can see there that opens it up yes it's fast paced but that also opens it up to like being able to just pull some of these crazy things off yeah i like so it cool. games has some wacky stuff for sure which is pretty awesome i like to open that up as well like north noxy belko what are some of the like what what is something like you like most about super type um i don't know i'm a big fan of the character design personally that's like one of my major things um I feel like currently in the games industry, you can have these smaller games be developed and it really just feels like a recolor of a game that you've played previously, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to a character's kit or a character's design. And I feel like Super 5 actually doesn't do that even a little bit. However, you still have characters that are recognizable that you can compare to other characters to help uh, newer players like get involved in the game. Say, hey, I play this character in, in game X and this character in Super Vive is very similar to this this character that I used to play. Um, so you have that, that bridge, but everything feels unique despite it feeling recognizable. And I feel like that's really refreshing at the moment uh being able to see something that isn't just a new fresh coat of paint um and is actually genuinely brand new uh in 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 the industry like i'm a big aluna fan unsurprisingly as a bunny vtuber uh <laughs> oh <No> um, <laughs> huge aluna fan uh there's no character in a game right now that plays the way that aluna plays um and it's like addicting. Like I love logging into Supervive and clicking on Aluna and pressing the play button. Like as soon as the servers open, and it's awesome. I don't have a I don't have a character like that right now in any other game. And it's been a while since I've had a character like that. So like, you having enjoyable cast is like way more valuable to me as a player than nearly anything else. I can't lie. If if I can fall in love with a character or characters plural, um, that's that's the best way to go about it for me as a as as a as a gamer. Personally, that's my, that's one of my favorites. Great answer. How about you, North? Um, I gotta go with how fluid everything feels. Like, everything just feels so... I don't know how to explain it. It just feels so awesome to play. Everything feels rewarding. Everything feels responsive. Nothing feels... Even when I was playing on, you know, the NA ping, everything still felt really, really um, responsive to play. I suppose that comes down to all the work that they've been putting in so far. But, you know, I feel like if a game can perform well even when i'm not on my native servers and everything just still feels satisfying to use um i feel like that's really important for for me especially because i find a lot of the time if a game doesn't even if the game looks amazing the it, the play is amazing the game modes are great the heroes are great if it doesn't feel good to play i'm not interested so they've i'm happy to say they've completely nailed um the actual fluidity of the game and it's so addicting as well in that regard like i i at the start i wasn't a big fan but as the more i played i just started feeling more and more excited with every little thing i did every kill i got every camp i killed every time i got an upgrade on one of my abilities it just felt better and better and better each time and it you know games you don't want a game to be addicting you want a game to be fun and they've got both of those perfect Ooh, that's a really good answer. That's like, kind of similar to my answer. Like, 
I what I actually really like most about this game is like the core loop. I find the core loop is so fast. You get in fast, you drop fast, you start playing fast. And I think like for some reason I can't stop playing every time. I mean, North heard me say this. I was like, one more, just one more. 30 <laughs> hours later, and I'm still playing. It's just like it's so addictive, the core loop, just like how fast it is. I love the hype squad kind of thing, even if I don't quite understand it. <laughs> Same. Everything's like celebrated in the game. Getting a new upgrade, like even the 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 simplicity. I love the simplicity of upgrading your armor and like how the game kind of does a lot of the thinking for you if you don't know what you're doing. And that's that's some really good UX. I got to say, I was pretty happy with it. I didn't understand it all, but it was pretty easy after a few games to start understanding what was going on with like the bottom UI stuff, understanding the level cap. So I liked how everything was just very snappy. Everything I needed was basically there. Other than the crouching? What the fuck? I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> um, it's very <laughs> crucial. <laughs> I know. I didn't know that. You guys need to add that on the side. Just saying. Yeah. Um, yeah that's yeah. a tutorial, but it's fine. We won't say much about it. No one plays the tutorial, okay? Yeah, I skipped the yeah, tutorial. No one plays, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tutorials aren't necessarily Falco's best friend. <laughs> I'm a gamer. I don't need tutorials. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but seriously. Um, <laughs> no, you're right. That That is really cool. I also, I loved how... Every time you drop in the map, like where things are, where the armor vaults are, what kind of environmental effect you get on the map that time, that changes, which is a nice way to like mix it up because we're not all dropping the same place every time. Really nice touch with that. And also that door mini game? What the heck is that? I can't do it. The door mini game. <laughs> the vault, yeah. Uh, the vaults. Oh, I so play with funny, new people dude. and they're like, oh, you should do it. I'm like, I can't. They're like, oh, play that. I'm like, dude, I always let, so I can't do it. I can't. I'm just terrible. I well, can't. I love hacking the vaults. It's my favorite. It's my favorite mini game. <laughs> oh my God. I'm glad. I just let my teammates. <laughs> you can do it if you ever play with the, me. The, <laughs> amount, the amount of times we got jumped because we spent like at least like five minutes trying to figure <laughs> out how to do it. Yeah. yeah. So much. So many times. Room to improve for sure. Oh man. It's cool though. Like it. It, it is a game where, like, for me personally, I'm not used to playing top-down. So I'm constantly, I was running into, like, abilities that were on the ground. I was running into, like, stuff because I was trying to look at my, like, the range of my abilities. And I think that comes with just not, like, inexperience of top-downs. Mm -hmm. But it was a shooter aspect that really, really felt like it. And, of course, once I got, like, the character, like, Bishop, and I was able to punch people, I was like, I think I found it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also spiking is one of the greatest things ever put into yes, a game that's oh, so good absolutely. for me it's just putting people off the map that was just kind of my oh thing my with gigantic <laughs> cliff, cliff gaming. gaming that's awesome mm -hmm. so okay so we all have like things we really liked about it now i'm really curious about like what is if you had to choose like one thing you change about the game and I'm really curious, obviously, about Bidboo, your a dev's perspective here. Um, oh, what what the would be the thing you would change about it? And, and uh, anyone's willing, like I want everyone's answer, but I'm I'm <laughs> I'll let I'll let I'll let, I'll let y'all go oh, first. I'll oh, go first. I. I <laughs> I, the problem for me is like this is one of those things like as you work on the thing like my list probably includes everything on y'all's <laughs> list I, like probably. the list is enormous every time i play i'm like oh damn it we should fix oh, oh this should be better you know what i mean so i'll let y'all right, go first i have one okay <laughs> every ability being able to go through terrain preach <laughs> Oh, you it. want them all to go no, through terrain? Or to there's too through. many? There's too many. I'm constantly getting bombarded by shit. And then it feels kind of annoying when you're playing a character who doesn't have that. It's hard to mm -hmm. counterplay against it. My opinion. No, it was totally. Kingpin's pool that really got... Because I was, like, low, hiding behind a wall. And I get pulled through, like, three walls. <laughs> like, bro... <laughs> Leave me alone. Okay, but for the pink kingfin, that feels like awesome, right? Like for the kingfin player, that was like yeah, the best that's thing that's true. happened to him all game. Yeah, it feels awesome when I'm doing it, but like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a hard balance. Okay, that doesn't make me feel as bad uh, as mine. <laughs> mine is actually like, I am actually going to talk on this one for void. Um, 
getting stunned out of your uh, teleport, your shift, your little swap places. It actually cancels it out. Ooh. I feel like as somebody who absolutely despises playing against Void, no, I'm perfectly fine keeping that one in, friend. Uh, I don't want you teleporting away from me after I've CC'd you. Uh, please stay in place. Please do not disappear from me. I am trying to kill Stun you. Stun for longer, bro. Most of the time, I'm actually setting it up ahead of time and then running face first into the enemy to teleport them into my combo. <laughs> yeah, 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 the kidnap, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or, you, or you or you send one of us into them, bro. <laughs> like, you kept sending me into the middle of oh them. Oh my god. To be quite honest, we got into the habit of calling out when the teleport was happening. You just didn't look at the ground. <sighs> bro, I was... It, it was three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> He's just trolling us constantly. <laughs> unintentionally half the time unintentionally but the other half intentional either way it's good content to way. be fair yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like noxy would like to change since they've had so much time with the game thus far um i feel currently that there are a couple of problem characters and if you've ever been in any of the super five discords uh you know that my sentiment is very much shared with a huge chunk of people um I think we have two problem child characters right now. I think Brawl and Jewel are definitely the stronger oh, yeah. option on the cast. Um, Brawl specifically is is one of my issues. Um, he has an ability, which I don't know if you guys know, um, but he can execute you immediately to box. Like you don't even get the opportunity to be a wisp. You are immediately executed to box and playing against that feels really bad. Uh, I'm sure it feels fantastic for the Brawl players, of course. I mean, that's why they clicked <laughs> on the character, of course. But um, as a player, you know, doing my best, dodging everything, and then just getting right-clicked into a box and not not fully comprehending why it happened or, like, how I got outplayed feels really, really bad. Um, however, um, the developers have stated that it is something that they're looking at. It is things that they're looking at. So it's honestly not even that big of an issue for me. I don't, I don't know. I'm not, like, a... <laughs> I, I'm like perfectly fine. Unfortunately, I'm like Super Vibes like number one fan. Like I would do anything for this game. Like I don't have anything that I'm mad at other than sometimes Brawl right clicks on me and it makes me mad or like sometimes Jewel dashes 30,000 <laughs> times and my HP's gone, you know? That's like, yeah. it's like my biggest complaint, but I guess that's a good thing is that my complaint's really like superficial if you think about it. I don't know. I'm Super Vibes' biggest fan. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't criticize it too much. I'm just <laughs> is good otherwise oh, yeah, no please. improvement will happen so not to mention it's still on the road to re official release mm -hmm. there's True, always yeah. things that are subject to change oh, yeah. oh well, and, and one more thing hold on the fucking mana i don't just get rid of it huh? okay look the mana no <laughs> way no way i mean if you eat so... berries along the way you every now and then you know, eat some of the vibe fruits Look, or the potions. Of, You're never going to have an issue with that. got me killed so many times. And for some reason, for me, that bar is so fucking tiny. And I have, there, there's got to be a better way then to tell me I'm out of mana or approaching out of mana. Something, because it, it's, it's not something I'm looking at all the time. Maybe yeah. on screen flashing, something that's like, hey. Just play. Just play Aluna. Oh yeah, mo uh, most characters actually have some sort of like mana regeneration in their left click. Aluna is one of those characters where if you hit a left click on an enemy, you will develop mana. Like you will get mana back. Um, what if maybe I'm she's the, the only one. Lady, okay, and I'm holding the, the crown. Punch lady. And I'm holding the crown, and I need to use the abilities, but I'm out of mana, and I don't understand why my stuff's grayed out. <laughs> Wait, even, we, even though we know that's not your main. Oh my gosh, just saying. I'm just saying, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'd like, the improvement I would suggest is just a little bit more indication of like things like that. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Like maybe flash, like, oh, I have my item that gives me mana, flash that or something on the screen there. Be like, use this, use this, you idiot. I don't know. Totally. You can be mean, it's fine. Anyway, what are your thoughts, Bidboon? It's, it's so funny because I think... What y'all are calling out, it, and it's interesting because, like, Noxie, you, you've played a bunch of League before, yes. right? And the rest of you are pretty, like, shooter players. You get, it's so, like, when people come from the different sides of this, the things that they, like, immediately pick up and the things that they struggle with are so different. Yes. Where, like, the people that come from League are like, 
yeah, I CC'd you. Your thing should stop. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's so funny because the the league players coming in and are like, how come all my shit gets blocked by walls? What is this garbage? And then all the like shooter players come in and they're like, how come my stuff, how come things go through walls? This doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so, but it's so cool. I love this like weird mashup and it's such an interesting like, problem space because like yeah how do we communicate the things you're lacking because like the league players the idea of man like so many times we get people who are like mana isn't a thing in this game how come no one ever runs out of mana and then you get the <laughs> other side where people are like why does mana exist everyone should just be gated by cooldowns only and and like i think both sides are completely valid and accurate it's just so like interesting to see i think something that's that's true and this isn't a defense of supervise this is just a reality of like games like <laughs> we're all we've all played so many games and you building games especially at this point for an audience that is like really familiar with a bunch of sort of hidden language that's been developed for them over you know decades of playing this stuff and we don't even really think about how much we've like built in an ingrained understanding of stuff that may not exist for other players you know what i mean some people who who come from like the the moba stuff like really struggle with the wasd and aiming with the mouse you know what I mean? Like they really, really, it's it's a it's a big challenge for them to kind of get this. Like my movement and my clicking are disconnected, and I have to like move with one hand and aim with the other, etc. And then you know, on the flip side, because they, they are so used to, they've gained all this like expectation and knowledge of like how characters work and you know what causes what and what cancels what and etc. etc. Like how that gameplay flows, and it's all this like hidden knowledge. And then the same with with shooter stuff. Like you you know you're so used to very sort of uh, a, a ton of agency in the hands of the shooter, in the hands of the offensive, you know, whatever, where it's like, I pressed my button, the thing should happen. How come it didn't happen? Because I got stuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? And those are super, and that's like, I'm not saying that in a in a, uh, a bad way. Like, that's that's so valid, especially if you come because like, in shooters, like, it feels terrible for someone like they slowed me they they you know prevented me from aiming that's illegal i always get to shoot back at maximum efficiency and it's who can do it faster or better and it's just so cool to see and so interesting to like have these sort of different challenges where like the just the audience that you're talking to determines so much what the sort of like worries are and what you need to communicate and like that that's hard for me i mean the, the, the challenges I have with, with the game, this is me switching from dev mode to just like me, David, the, the player <laughs> mode. Spill the tea! Um, Hi, David. <laughs> my, my tea is that like, sometimes we talk about like, you know, what are, what are like the sort of existential worries. And I don't think we have any too big existential worries right now, but I think to me, the biggest, scariest problems in terms of like how hard they are to fix and, and the challenge of them is like, I think solo play especially for your first time is really tough combined with like it's incredibly overwhelming at first mm -hmm. there's a lot you know what i oh, mean yeah, yeah. I, everyone has experiences like you start the game you're like what in the hell is happening oh yeah i'm not going <laughs> to the practice range you're kidding me i'm getting no, life experience of course not. Stop me in the hunt. And I'm no not, time yeah. to go into the practice range no playing, time i'm not playing tutorials are you kidding exactly. me like and, and that's completely <laughs> and like people are like oh please are like no players not, i don't play tutorials are you kidding me you can't if the game comes out, you know, our job as, as developers and designers is to give you something that you can just press play and get in and have a good time and find it. And oh, yeah. this last test, I think we saw, hopefully, that, like, while it was really overwhelming at first, which is something we're, like, really actively working on, like, it, it's also, I think, people saw the magic. The, the hope is that, like, even though it's really scary and overwhelming, like, you at least get a glimpse of, like, the reason that it's cool to keep you going. Because, like, once you get a few games in and you kind of are more familiar with it, it really shines. It's just that first you know, the worry of people kind of reflecting off of it, playing two games by themselves, being like, ah, I don't get it, and quitting, which is super valid. Like, there's so many games coming out. Everything is, is you know, attention economy oh, and yeah. value for time and stuff, and I don't, you know what I mean? I wouldn't blame anyone for picking up the game, dying twice, <laughs> you know, sitting there watching their teammate run around for 10 minutes and being like, this game sucks, and quitting. Like, yeah, you're, you're right, that was not a good experience, you know what I mean? For real. Right. And, and those funds are really experience. hard. That, yeah. That was it's, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's so hard. <laughs> it's actually my experience getting my hands on the game. Uh, I'm entirely different, like, time cycling from my uh, from my friends. I had to kind of just go at it kind of solo. And it was like, all right, I see, I see it. I don't get it. I'm just going to pause on that for a while. And I picked it up on this last test, was able to run back at it a couple more times and got a lot of good enjoyment from it. 
Oh my god. And that's however. so oh. real. <laughs> he said, however, uh oh, uh oh. No, no, no. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dropping the it's button. going down. Oh, no, no. Nothing oh. negative. Nothing oh. negative. What I'm saying is, uh, however, with these tests and their availability, this opens up uh, an interesting little kind of topic. This does open it up to folk being able to get in massive amounts of hours. Some folk are in there. I'm not going uh, to. Uh, you know, there's some resident uh, bunny enjoyers here <laughs> that get in there from the moment it's available to the moment it's no longer available to them to queue. How do you think, like, this is for everyone, how do you think that this, like, necessarily affects the player economy of the game? Not necessarily in terms of, okay, we got, like, 100,000 players or 200,000 players. No. Like, um, in players, their learning curves and how it generally affects, like, the difference in how people pick it up. Uh, as quickly versus otherwise, especially before official release. I think yeah. the limited availability to the game, especially in its current state, is like extremely good. Um, I know you're not talking necessarily about like player retention, um, but it does kind of fall into that. It creates a sense of FOMO for everybody getting involved. So the people who do want to get in on it are um, like doing their best to get in. I think that's banger. Um, also, I think Supervive actually does a pretty solid job about not setting you too much up against people who have been playing since the beginning of time. Um, I almost never see uh, like brand new players in my games uh, because I've been here since 2022 and I have an MMR that's through the roof and I'm playing with the, the people that I've been playing with since 2022. Um, and so I oh, think I it's not. Never run into you. Oh my god! <laughs> I promise I'm not yeah, good. We got I smoked swear. A few times. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> I just get carried all the time, so my MMR is really high. Don't worry. But oh. I think it's I think it's fine. Like I think it's fine that some people come in and brain rot the game the second that it's open to the second that it's closed. I, I feel like it doesn't actually affect as much as you might think it does um as a player i i haven't heard new players being like oh well i got destroyed by this person who's been playing for forever so i don't want to play anymore um so i think the game actually does a pretty okay job like keeping it under wraps uh unlike say an mmo of some sort you know an mmo you go in you go into pvp and then the guy who's been playing the game since you know 2020 um beats your ass as soon as you load in because you just started it doesn't it doesn't feel like that with supervive it's actually pretty nice um i feel i don't uh, maybe i should say i don't feel like i'm smashing newer players in my games um mm -hmm. and i have not had a conversation with any newer players um that they feel they are being like dominated by by people who have played um so i think it's good i think it's fine i think it's in an okay spot currently i think what they're doing with the limited edition playtest is like top tier like 100 percent, everything around it is like pop perfect <laughs> it's, a, it's a really it's a big challenge for i, I think the, the biggest time that you hit that challenge is I, the answer that is like the hope is like well if more people play the game then you get better better mmr spread you know what i mean you mm -hmm. queue times and etc is like always one of those challenge things was like, well the better it does the better the matches are which makes it better it's like a very positive feedback loop and you see this you know i mean the, the sort of worry of when when multiplayer games die, there's like a certain point where you hit this death spiral of there's too few people playing the game, so the matchmaking times increase and the quality of like skill disparity in the match decreases, which causes people to quit, which causes longer queue times and worse kill disparity, which causes people to you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then that's how you get that's oh, how you get no. zero players. Like and, and and I don't know the exact numbers, but like everyone there's a lot of this is where like the people who are oh, are real smart at this company like are always in the in the chats like what's our CCU curves looking like can we like adjust the curve for blah 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 maybe we should widen up the skill disparity so people can get into matches faster and like I know last time we were like oh there's a lot of people playing we can like maybe stand to make queues take a little longer so we could make sure that the games are more evenly matched etc and like that's right that's just one of those really big challenges of of any game of any sort of live thing but I agree with. With Nox, I think in general, especially if you're playing with people around the same level of you, level as you, like we've been fortunate to get enough attention and hype that like we have influxes of new players coming in, and that's part of the reason that they do stuff like well, we don't just let everyone in immediately. You know, we kind of fill that hopper of like people who want to play the game, and then we can distribute keys because you always expect you're gonna give out 
I'm making up completely random numbers here, so 100 keys, and 70 of them are actually going to download the game and play the game, and 35 of them are going to play it the day after, and 20 of them are going to come back for the next playtest. So if you have 500 people that have signed up, if you let 500 people in, you get one really good playtest, and then by the next one, you're only left with the Sweat Lords. So that's kind of why you have this, like, okay, let's do it only so often, let's you know, bring in new groups of new players every time. So they have, those new players have other new players to play against. You do hit this issue. I mean, I feel like you saw this and I told you a couple times. Oh yeah. Daniel or Felco, when we, when we would play, you know what I mean? When I'm playing with friends and stuff, sometimes it's hard, you know, it's really challenging. We'll be playing and I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a lemur. You guys, we don't, we don't <laughs> oh, yeah, want I this. Remember you know, saying that. I'm like, oh, we're in the ultra sweat lobbies teams. Like <laughs> these people have been playing longer than I you. have. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, and they're like, wow, that team is crazy. I'm, like, I'm sorry. I'm like, why don't you, I'm like, no, they're better than me, man. There's no <laughs> chance. I can't. <laughs> I expected a carry. That's... Oh my God. He couldn't carry the rest of us. <laughs> Nobody's carrying anything against it. those guys. That is like our top no, team. No. Oh, really? Yeah. Whoa. I mean, yeah. Sometimes I look at that lobby and like, no, no, no. Those, those four teams will be the final four. Don't worry. <laughs> like they're the best in the, but hopefully as we get more people and stuff. And that's, to be fair, like one of the eternal sort of cursed problems of any multiplayer game, because at the same time, it would be really unfair if I queue with y'all, you know, two really experienced people queue with two inexperienced people, and it throws you into the super low-level lobby, because then all those right. other low-level players are like, who are these two sweaty nerds destroying our, <laughs> you know, <laughs> our, our weak lobby? So it's dealing with sort of like time and skill disparity between, between players is, is challenging, but I do think that's why we like the sort of like lethality option of it all. And in the way that I think about, uh, like, so I'm trying not to go on too much of an apex tangent it. or anything, but like when we talk about like lethality and TTK, one of the things that like having more lethal games allows you to do is like, you can out strategize and beat people who are mechanically better than you. You know, if a void hides in a bush and hits lemur with a right mouse button, you know what I mean, and stuns him, like, you can kill that person. doesn't matter if, how much better than you they are. If you catch them, you can get them. And you see that in, in you know, your kind of, like, much more lethal kind of shooters, you know, your, your Counter-Strikes and your Valorants and etc. where it's just, like, if, if you see them before they see you or you, like, plan appropriately, like, there are ways to outskill people who are better than you mechanically or whatever, and, and you can sort of gain that advantage. Whether you can turn it into a full team fight is one thing. And then, like, stuff like Apex, longer TTK, we always had this issue of, like, people would get the jump on a better team, but because the, like, just mechanical skill of controlling the gun recoil and the TTK was longer, etc., etc. You just end in this situation where it's like, we got the jump on them, and then they turned and just deleted, you know, beamed us to death. And <laughs> so a lot of times, you know, it's funny, like spiking is one of those things we get called a lot where like, it's really frustrating to have spikes happen to you and people get frustrated. But at the same time, it's our it's our headshot mechanic. It's what allows it's what allows players to like have those insane turnarounds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can be the person with the crown and just have a sick moment and turn around and catch someone as they're trying to chase you over the abyss and kill them. Like having those moments to let excitement and randomness and whatever, it's always a challenge with PR. How do you balance like sort of the, the chance and the randomness and the RNG and the luck with the pure skill expression? And I think sometimes people get a little too lost. And, like it should always be about you, the better player wins every time purely by skill. And I think there's something valuable to saying, well, sometimes you are able to get an advantage that maybe is pure luck or whatever, you know what I mean? Or is RNG or is not, you know, being able to aim or move better, but is instead positioning on the map better or knowing how to play with your team better, whatever. Yeah. It's good to have different ways to be better and improve because you have players that are going to play the game very differently. I'm, I'm totally like North where I'm like, I'm all about the moment to moment. I just want to get good at moving and shooting. I can't play strategically to save my life. And then I'll play with people who are like big brain on where do we move for the circle or whatever. Can't aim, but they're all about like, they're always going to make sure we're in the right spot on the map at the right time. And like, I think that's really important. You let, you let people feel like they have their own, you know, contribution to the team. And I think that's really important. I love it. Cool. Sorry, I went on a bit no, of a tear. It's like who you, <laughs> who you squad with really matters in it. You know, yeah, well, it's great. Course. Well, when you want to feel like I want to feel valuable to my team, I want to feel like I'm doing something for us, even if I'm not the best at you know everything. Oh, it's, yeah. it's cool, you know. You get your your Ocean's Eleven, whatever. Like, oh, I'm the hacker. I'm the whatever. You know, everyone's got their role. <laughs> it's cool. 
I like how it has also circled around to the where Supervive does open it up to a lot of these situations where you can out something the yeah. enemy team or even sometimes your teammates. <laughs> yeah. But one thing I do want to ask now too, what what is a, a really fond memory you might have at least so far with playing the game? For me, it was just I was in the right place at the right time in a bush on the out on the opposite side of a wide gap crouched and getting that extra vision and a couple individuals just did not do their homework before going across <laughs> it that's so good Managed to get a double uh, so a double good. spike on that spot on that spot uh one of mine too was like north was like okay there's a team chasing us let's hide in the bushes we hide in the bushes <laughs> yes spike they come around <laughs> so good Oh, so I mean, I think I think we obviously have to give a shout out to the train. Whenever we, <laughs> yeah. our entire team got ran over the first, like literally, I think it was our first game. We were all distracted. And we were just talking. Three of us just go, Neow, run over. Yeah, featured in your. Like, I'm so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People will talk like, "Oh my god, I'm so bad. I got hit with the train." I'm like, dude, I've been playing this game like. I don't know, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred hours. Uh, I died to the train so many times. I died to the train like yesterday and play test. It happens. It's... I, um, train takes no prisoners. I did a show match recently, the most recent show match that we had. Um, I was actually involved with, and um, compared to my teammates, my my skill was like completely different than theirs. Like I was playing with a uh, pink ward from League of Legends. If you guys know who that is, uh, it's like one of the best Shaco yeah. players uh, out there. Um, so oh. like me compared to this guy, completely different, right? Uh, and then my other teammates are just like super high level players. Uh, we lost the game. Uh, because my high level players uh, sat in front of a train, um, oh, no! uh, so we ended up we ended up going six <laughs> yeah. here because my uh, my go. Celeste sat in front of a train. We revived the Celeste, who then died to the train again while she was standing there after being revived. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would honestly say, like, don't worry, the train hits everybody. Even if you are brand new or you're super super experienced, the train will hit you. But if you didn't know, the train lights up a little bit right before. You don't even have to wait for the noise. The train tracks light up. If you didn't know, oh, I've I, I've learned that. That's about. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that, to be fair. It's really subtle, but once you start looking at it, you're going to be like, oh, I'll never get hit by the train again. And you know what? Once I once I found out, I haven't been hit by the train. You know, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I haven't been hit by the train in a really long time. Oh, my god! Watch. This is going to be the indicator. Next thing you know, you're going to get hit by the train. <laughs> yeah. My first game back is going to be a train, a train death. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's also no. what I love. I just got to call that out real quick. Like, it's another fun little thing that you can learn about the game. Like, like the thing with the train, with the lights, the um, the birds, and the fact that sound is really important in this game. And, like, hiding. Like, little things that really, like, help make the experience feel like, I don't know. Like, there's, there's just so much anticipation, I'd say, uh, from everything that you do in the game. You're like, oh. Am I gonna get hit by the train? Oh, can I beat somebody in front of the train? Um, will these birds <laughs> alert somebody? Like, will that be bad? Uh, I just, I love the little things that you kind of only find out while playing the game. It's, it's so fun. Um, <laughs> so actually, I wanna ask you guys, like, since we've all played Supervive enough to have like good opinions on it, obviously some more than others, <laughs> how do you think this game stacks up against like its competitors? You know, pretty much like games that you said kind of made it what it is, especially Battle Right. I think like Battle Right needs a good shout out here because it uh, some of how the characters move and do their things really hits Battle Right for me. Rest in peace, Battle Right. Um, but yeah, like, what do you think, Bid Boot? I'm, I'm curious what everybody thinks. But like when this game's released, like how do you see it stacking up to, uh, you know, your big competitors? Big competitor. I mean, first of all, Battle Right, my beloved. I know. Oh my God, that game was incredible. I love the hell out of that so game. Good. But I'm also the kind of player that will grind Arena in in Super oh Live, and I know that that's a smaller <laughs> Arena's fine. smaller audience. But it's one of those. Yeah, I think um against the I think something that Supervise has going for it is just. On the surface, I think initially, if you're just, like, looking at it, it, like, maybe seems a little, like, oh, it just kind of looks like League of Legends BR. But, like, you put your hands on it, and it's pretty clear pretty immediately that this is something a bit different. And I think we get a lot from being willing to take bigger swings and be different. And the thing to me that has made working at Theorycraft really so rewarding and special and, and what I think is going to make this game 
successful if it works is like as long as the game comes out we have some players like what this team is really excellent at is just being willing to put things out when they're a little jank when you're a little embarrassed mm. and just like working with the players quickly and iteratively and being really open and honest and like saying the point is we don't have to come up with the best thing we just have to have something that people are excited about and into and then we'll work with them you know what i mean it's a live game and we're committed like we talk all the time like launch is another day you know what i mean Love it's it. just the first day of another day like let's let's make sure we're updating let's make sure we're adding new things to keep people excited let's make sure we're making adjustments and fixing problems and just always trying to push the boundary and keep it fresh and keep it new I, and and i think that that's something that we get to be able to do compared to a lot of our competitors because we're not this big established team in game with with tons of people you know what i mean league of legends they're right is how many thousand employees or whatever and I, I don't say that to to be mean to them by any means like it just we get to be this small scrappy you know what i mean quickly iterative team because we're small because we're scrappy because we get to just you know we're, a, we're we're not so worried about talking with players openly and honestly and maybe accidentally saying a stupid thing once in a while but like it, it's just been so refreshing to build a game this way. I mean, like, even before I was here, I don't remember... I think the company was online for, like, three to six months before they did their first player play test. Oh, wow. So this... this Like, it's it's one of our company pillars of, like, you know, ship when you're embarrassed. Like, work with players. Like, we're, we're here to build the game with players. And it's not just lip service. And I, I know a lot of people say, but, like, I really genuinely believe from the leadership all the way down, like, we, we believe that this is the way to make games right now. Mm -hmm. And the way to catch players um, with this weird, unique experience. And so I think we, we we offer something new for the League of Legends players in being way more action-y. And we offer something new for the shooter BR players by having these like much more character-focused, top-down, you know, wacky stuff. We offer something new to the you know battle right players by having BR with a train and birds and giant. <laughs> you know cat boulders that bounce around you know what i mean like i i think that that's really something special and it, and it just comes from the development philosophy of like everyone internally you know these things get added because just someone thinks they're cool jamo was like oh you should be able to glide and like now it's in the game and it's awesome and i come in and i'm like oh i really want to tweak the way these numbers feel whatever whatever and then we we catch the players like North you mentioned earlier, and I was so glad to hear, like, I'm the same one. I'm all into, like, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay feel. And, like, that, to me, is what makes a game sing. And everyone is empowered to make the kind of player that they are happy. You know what I mean? And I, I think that that's, that's my hope, that we'll, we'll succeed because of the development style and because of the willingness to keep it fresh and keep changing things and just, you know, go crazy. That's, that's the hope, at least. Oh, wow. That's the dream. <laughs> Such a fun game. I'm more than excited for the next round that, was, that I can get my hands that in. That was like the most beautiful explanation I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. Like, oh my gosh. Funnily enough, um, I, I talk about Super Life all the time. It is uh, expected <laughs> to be my new uh, mainstream game. Um, oh, awesome. Uh because I love playing one single game of, what can I say? Um, but I, I talk about Super Life <laughs> all the time, and I talk about Theorycraft specifically, um, and how the game feels so much different than other um game early games that i've been involved with uh i am a huge early access game uh enjoyer i've played uh every early access game that you can think of and um they have oh all died on me unfortunately i think i might be the problem but <laughs> another conversation for another day <laughs> supervive feels different supervive feels very different and it is less about the game itself and more about the company like literally the company is a driving thing for for super vibe the company loves making games every single person i've spoken to they love making video games and that's what they're here for and they love what they do and it is so clear and like every single developer i've spoken to has been an absolute like angel and these people don't have to be nice to us right like you're just here to make my game i don't you don't have to talk to me you don't have to tell me about your thoughts or anything like that but they do because they like talking to the community they like seeing what the community feels um about this decision or um having like their input and it is so 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 refreshing it is so nice to have because in a game like league of legends for example um i'm not talking to riot okay riot's not hitting me up in my dms to go hey noxie how do you feel about this or anything like that um because riot has an entire team full of people to do that and so like 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 you said the the, the scrappy nature of it really 
is what sets it out. And I think it's going to be able to hold up almost exclusively because of that. The game could be dog, but the company's good and we're thinking and we're good. But luckily the game's awesome. So it's fine. We got two like <laughs> cherries on top here, so it's perfect. And that is such a blessing. It. <laughs> it, y'all are the true play. I mean, really, I've uh, people are like, oh, the developers. I'm like, nah, but like, y'all are out here playing, spending a lot of your time. You know what I mean? Playing and promoting this thing that is like not even real yet. Who knows if it's going to be successful? You know what I mean? On, you know, 3 a.m., like, especially, you know, our EO, EU folks are playing at 5 a.m. on 150 <laughs> ping. Seriously? And like, I don't know. And there's like taking the taking the time to like write up feedback and explain these things like it's it's a two-way street so we're also just so blessed to have a community that's so excited with us and and willing to spend all the time to like care and talk and communicate and you know express their feelings on the thing and make montages and make incredible fan art and emotes and songs and like i don't know that's wow for us that's the reason we do it that's what it you you all are the motivation too. You know what I mean? It truly, like our internal Slack. You know, someone posts like the the Oathbreaker diss track or something. We're all losing our absolute minds. Like it's so exciting. I've got good it's news really, for you. Like, There's something that's, coming that's the very soon force. that you'll be excited about. Then. Oh yeah! <laughs> I'm not allowed to spoil too much, but I am involved in something <laughs> that you'll like. Oh. <laughs> Early spoilers. Early spoilers. No, I mean, no. diss track is pretty pretty close. No 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 no. <laughs> No way! Oh, oh let's go. <laughs> I'm also I, I, I'm also one of those like insane like community members. Um, I am getting a tattoo quite literally like next month. Uh, a super life tattoo. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! Uh, this, it'll be one of two. I actually I said that I would get a tattoo if the um the trailer got six hundred thousand uh views and then it got ten million. <laughs> uh, so you know <laughs> I decided I I would adjust my tattoo a little bit and I would get multiple uh multiple little things. Uh, the first one was just like for me, but the second one. Uh, do you know the little gooby emotes that we have in the main Super Vibe Discord? Yes! Uh, I'm getting the gooby uh, emotes. Uh, I'm doing like a little vending yes! machine, I think. Or not vending machine, uh, claw machine, where like they're like little plushies. I thought that would be super cute. I got permission from uh, the gooby That's artist. So she's super chill with it. <laughs> So that is a fan right there. That I'm, is I'm a dedicated fan. Listen, amazing. I told you I'm Super Vibe's biggest fan, okay? I told you. <laughs> I love it. Our executive producer has a, has a super vibe tattoo already as well. What? Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my yeah, god. Bellis. Yep, yep, yep. I'm sad. I, I wanted to be the first. I'll get one. I'll get one. Let's, let's go. Get, let's no, get magic no, 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 super vibe tattoos. Come love, on. Not only from the community, but from the folk that create the game as well. Because I feel like, yeah, a lot of times now it feels like more corporate, more company than it ever is like actual passion project for a lot of games. At least a lot of games that maintain such a big view in the internet scape that we have today i give a lot of credit to to the the, the company leadership and our community management stuff because like something i've learned working at you know ea and bungie and all like the developers the people who are on it are always this passionate and always this excited but we often don't get the opportunity to to be open and honest and communicate you know what i mean i think companies are really worried about again someone saying something stupid and it being a big pr thing which Mm. is very reasonable and valid but like i just have been so appreciative of of our stance of just like it's more important to be open and honest than it is to like say the right thing every time you know what i mean and i don't know i just we i like the idea of like treat tr treat players like they're reasonable human beings and like there will be some people who are dumb and miss the point or whatever but like they know that an individual developer is just a person not a spokesperson for the entire company. People aren't that stupid, you know what I mean? Like, um, and the same, you know. Yeah, but, but the let, let them. It's fine. Don't don't ruin it for all the people who are who are smarter than that. Just because some people are dumb, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I really appreciate that. And the same players, you know, are, are so. I don't know. It's it's just been so wonderful how how supportive and like open and honest and kind players have been with us too. You know what I mean? Positive and negative and just, I don't know. We can't thank you enough. <laughs> really, like, thank you all. I was like, oh my gosh. I am out of questions on anything I might have. I have one last question, and then we'll Ooh. we'll wrap up. Uh, okay, so I wanted to ask, like, is there anything that you want to announce for the game? Like, maybe next playtest? <laughs> any any uh, hints at things that are upcoming? You wanna you wanna drop here? Mm, um, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I think. Uh... Next playtest is going to be on Monday. We've made it a third-person shooter. <laughs> Shut up. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'd, no, yeah, I'd I, still oh, play it. I mean, 
<laughs> Let me think. I I think we're really at this point we're committed on like taking the shape of things and like getting it out the door, but we are doing a lot of thinking right now of what are we doing once it's out? What are we doing post launch? What are we doing to like keep it exciting and fresh once it's real? And and so I think like if anything I would say be excited not just for the upcoming playtest, but for for when it's real. I think we're we're if anything, it's not gonna be too stale. That's all I'm hoping. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. It's we're not gonna stay stale. We're gonna keep making wacky stuff and for better or worse. And as long as people keep telling us <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Let's go. Ultra bullet trains. There are oh, six no. trains. Ooh. They're all <laughs> <laughs> no. But like this I don't know if you guys saw the clip of like there was one bug once where like everyone dropped on one point oh, on the it's map. It's so funny. <laughs> And everyone in turn is like, this should just be a storm shift that happens one in a thousand times. Just... We're all like, yes, we should do that. that sounds fun, That's hilarious. So... Like, <laughs> The hottest drop you can do. The hottest, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every time we get a wacky bug that like is broken, but we're kind of like, that's kind of neat, though. People are so willing to be like, well, let's see if players like it. You know what I mean? That's we're fun. not too worried about making something that sucks because we can always remove it. And I don't know, yeah. I, I don't think I can say anything specific, but I will say that we got some some fan favorites and some exciting stuff in the works for sure. Oh my gosh. Are you allowed to say any any time that the um you know, that we'll see Supervive again or like a general time frame of the year? I I would say um we we do try and play test basically once a month ish. So I would say it's pretty reasonable to expect near the end of this month, early next month, and then repeat that we're gonna keep doing uh play tests. Hell yeah. And then we are you know, we're trying to make this game real for sure. So it's not going to be too long. Oh my god, I am beyond excited, honestly. Like and your your passion like uh, and Noxie's passion <laughs> shining through here. It's it's really it's making me like so excited like I wish I could play right now. So I guess same. Uh, oh my god, up. same. <laughs> I need to play the game. <laughs> um but I guess, you know, thank you guys so much for your time. We're going to we're going to wrap up. So I'm going to go through the list here and if you guys want to like shout out the socials people can like reach you at if if you want we'll we'll start with you vidboon anywhere people oh, can reach uh, you they, if if you want to be reached <laughs> no sure i uh i am amused apricot on twitter i guess people can like give them there if they have questions i'm on you know i'm That's on the various... an amazing name That's a great name <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you i appreciate it. i'm uh on some various I'm like, you know, on the Discord and stuff, so if y'all need anything, reach out to me. I'm always always excited to talk to players, always exciting to hear things. Sorry if I miss you. Sometimes I get a sudden, you know, <laughs> eight different people and I miss one. I'm so sorry. Aww. Please reach out again if, if I don't answer, but I love talking to people. Um, No, thank you all so much for, for having me. and, and Oh, thanks for being here. You're like the nicest person ever, and I do know him in real life, Aww. so I can say that for real. Um, <laughs> North, how about you? You want to drop your social? Um... My I have a Twitch uh, at I am the North Star and on YouTube I'm just the North Star two three five. If you want to go watch me there, everyone should. He's amazing. He's just did a <laughs> review of your game, Bidbood. So you should check it out. Check him I out will, on YouTube. I Thank you. Actually, I think I oh, saw no. it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. No, oh. I, I I'm on all the YouTubes. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm googling. Let's <laughs> I'm go. Doing. <laughs> uh, Noxie, you're next. Um, I'm mostly active on Twitch and Twitter, uh, Noxibun, that's N-O-X-I-I, -I, there's two I's, I-I-B-U-N, um, and I'm also, uh, extremely active on the discords. I'm exclusive to helping out new players, so anybody who's a new player is f more than welcome to reach out to me at any point, uh, if they have any questions about anything. That's amazing. I'm gonna make sure we have a link to the Supervive Discord as well. Um, yes. yes. So, so, Sin, how about you? I can be reached through Discord and or Twitch. It's pretty uh, direct with TrueXSyn. That's really all there is for me on that. And obviously, I'm Falco Punch on all the things. So if you ever want to know where I am, just, you know, there you go. <laughs> Thank you again, everybody, so much for being here. It's been amazing to, like, hear all the passionate talk about this, all the, the plans, all the things that you love about the game. It's it's really like like just hurry up. Just press the button so I can play the game right now, please. <sighs> and um thank you guys so much. And this has been Failure Incorporated and thanks for watching.